And I speak to a lot of founders and like, we spoke to customers and they told us they would buy it, but they haven't bought it. And I'm like, well, how did you ask the question? I know. How this is you... product 101. Product so 101. Like... Yeah, you, you don't. And also, to be honest, we don't really care what people say. <laughs> we know. <laughs> you have to realize the reason we don't care is because they, our customers, as much as we love them, they don't know what's possible. Right? They don't know what's possible. So... No, we're not. That's why there was a great quote from Steve Jobs. He would hold up his iPhone and say, you can conduct a hundred focus groups. You are never going to get an iPhone. In fact. So then what is it? Then does qualitative feedback even matter? If they oh, yeah, say, because oh. that's not what we're doing. We're not asking them, what would you like in the product? <laughs> what would you, you know, people that don't know what they're doing, they'll often ask things like, so pretend you're the designer. What would you change? <laughs> it's like, no, that's totally missing it. What you can do, in fact, there's a, there's a great Elon Musk. Of course, he's very good at this, uh, very good at product. And his argument is with qualitative feedback, your goal is to find all the things that are wrong with the product. Sure. So that's the difference. You're not looking for affirmation, which is what these, you know, naive founders are doing. They're not, you're not doing that. You're actually the opposite. You're going after all the reasons they would not use it. That's much more helpful to us. What are the reasons they wouldn't use it? Now, that doesn't necessarily tell us what to do. We have to use our, we have to simulate all this together that what we're seeing, and then we put together a model. And if we keep working at it, you know, there's no guarantees in this. It could be a, you could never get there, uh, right? Some products are never going to happen. But the idea is to dramatically accelerate the time to decide to get to the point where we actually have something that resonates. How many do you need to hear that from? And what I mean by that is, you know, um, there are some products where I say, oh, I need this for it to be useful. And the truth is I'm a super user or a very different type of user as some cohorts of users are. How do you have enough data to know that that's a broad enough swathe that we should listen versus yeah. it's an isolated case? Yeah, the, the, uh, the general heuristic here is don't go there. In other words, when we do qualitative feedback, we're not looking for a number. When we do quantitative feedback, we are. So the quantitative, that matters. And there's a function of how much time are you willing to wait to get the degree of confidence you need to be able to either have evidence or statistically significant proof. That's where we go. But that's different. We're talking qualitative. We don't, we're not like saying, oh, we got six people that didn't have an issue. We're good to go. <laughs> That's not what we do. What we're looking for with every user is what are the reasons that they would not use it? Now, we're also crafting a value test to see if they're serious about it. Because most people are nice, especially when you sit down with them. And they're, they're not going to tell you, you know, the joke is they're not going to tell you your baby is ugly to your face, <laughs> right? They're going to say, what a cute baby. But the truth is, they're like, yeah, I'm never going to use anything like so that. How, so how do you get the truth out of them, Marty? Well, there's a lot of ways we have. One way is to see if they'll actually pay for it. So literally, see if they'll pay for it. Pull out a credit card. You've probably heard of this idea of a non-binding letter of intent to buy. That's one of the techniques. To pull out a payment card is another technique. To be able to uh, commit to time is another technique. To, to pay with your reputation is another technique. The, the book Inspired, I wrote that book a few years ago. Inspired is meant to describe the major techniques that teams need to do good product work. Um, there's a lot more techniques out there, but those are the, like the, the ones that everybody needs. And it describes several of these tests you can do. Uh, another test of doing it, to measure this is the Sean Ellis test, which I'm sure you've heard of. Yeah. Of course. Can I ask a, a really, really hard one? And you can absolutely detest me for it. When we compare quantitative and qualitative, there comes this question of like, is product today more art or science? We've never had more metrics. We've never had more tooling. But then we have we lost the art? How do we think about that? Well, so when you say product there, do you mean product management or product development? I, I mean, actually, product development. Yeah, well, I would say product development today is a great blend of the two. 
It is absolutely. In fact, what I just described, the qualitative with the quantitative, that is a beautiful blend of the two. Uh, if I had to, if you force me to pick one, I would definitely say it's more art than science. But mm. part of the art is deciding when to count on the science, <laughs> right? When to use the science to when to really do that and really, really know, look, this is very risky. This is very important. I don't want to commit the resources to building this until and unless we have statistically significant evidence this is going to succeed. That's a very reasonable statement. I, I work with teams where that is exactly what you want to do. For other teams, it's like, we don't need that. We don't need that. We just need some confidence that we're not going in the wrong direction. So that's all we need. We can get that faster. This is the kind of judgment that product teams are making every day. And I would argue that judgment is much more art than science. I loved it. Scott Belsky actually said on the show, uh, intuition is what takes you to the mountain. Data is what takes you up it. 